Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low-budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got some jasmine rice, and the first thing you want to do is add it to a bowl and get it rinsed off. This is a real important step when you're making rice, and even though this is a dirty rice recipe, you don't want it to taste nasty, so you want to wash it thoroughly and get this milky consistency rinsed out. And you want to repeat this process until it rinses out nice and clean, and it shouldn't take you, if you do it right, more than three times. Now some recipes like to cook the rice with all of the other ingredients, and you can do that if you want to, but I'm going to add water to this rice here and cook it in a rice cooker instead, and I guarantee it won't hurt the flavor. I just touch the rice with the tip of my finger and if the water level reaches my first knuckle then we're good to go. The rice will turn out perfect every time without any other measuring. Now you want to just cut some garlic and you want to go ahead and chop this up really fine. You also need some chopped onion, celery, green onion, and fresh parsley. Now in a hot pan I'm going to melt down some butter. And once that completely liquefies, I'm going to go ahead and add the celery and onion. Now traditionally this recipe has chopped bell pepper in it, but I didn't add it because my kids won't eat it, but you can add it if you'd like. And salt and pepper to taste. And once you get that mixed in there, you want to go ahead and level out the bottom of the pan and let this saute for about five minutes. Now here I've got some chicken livers and it's a real important ingredient in this recipe and the secret is pureeing it in a food processor until it resembles the consistency of pudding. You're also going to need some ground pork and by now you'll have some real nice color in that celery and onion and you want to go ahead and add that pork and ground chicken liver to the pan. And instead of using a mixing spoon, I like to use a measure like this one here. It breaks down the pork into tiny granule sized pieces. It takes a little patience to do it this way, but after spending a few minutes, you'll see that it's well worth it. And once it cooks thoroughly and gets this nice golden brown color, I like to make a little well and drop in some more butter and add the garlic. This is completely for the benefit of the rice we'll be adding shortly, but you want to stir this in and get that melted in evenly throughout the entire pan. Now it's time to add the rice. Now carefully fold it into the veggie meat mix. Before I mentioned that bell pepper is traditionally used in this recipe, but I'm going to add sweet peas instead. This just makes it a lot more family friendly. But I'm also going to add those green onions and that fresh chopped parsley. And instead of Old Bay or Slap Your Mama, I'm going to use this Nors Beef Bouillon. But if you want to spice yours up, just add a little bit of cayenne, because a few tablespoons of this will make this dirty rice taste amazing. Mark my words. And once you get this all mixed in thoroughly, you're ready to serve. And as you can see, all the portions are well balanced. And if you look at this serving here, you can see it isn't sticky, it's very fluffy, and it's exactly the way you'd expect your rice to turn out. And there you have it, dirty rice right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing you want to do is make a marinade by mixing one egg and some buttermilk. Then you're going to shake in some Louisiana hot sauce. Once you get that mixed in real good, it'll leave a real nice pink tone. Now here I've got 
whole frog leg portions. And you can cook and fry them up like this, or you can go ahead and cut them in half and fry each one of them individually. But if you take a good look here, they're very meaty on the thighs and a good nice portion down on the lower bone. Now all you have to do is dip them all into the marinade and let them rest in here, fully covered, for at least 30 minutes. The longer the better, so overnight is good as well. Now for the breading, I've got self-rising flour, corn flour, I'm going to add some potato starch, and you can use corn starch if that's all you have, some panko, and some crab boil seasoning. And once you get these ingredients mixed together, you're going to have the perfect breading for crispy fried frog legs. Just pull each one of these from the marinade and fully coat in the dry mix. And what you're looking for is something that looks like this. Now just throw it down on the plate and wait five minutes before frying. But if you're interested in an extra crispy coating, all you have to do is double dip them back in the marinade and then back over in the dry flour mix. Now personally, I find it to be too much breading and I'm an extra crispy fan. I just don't like it on the frog legs, but you can decide for yourself. Just drop each one of these into preheated oil, 350 degrees Fahrenheit should do the trick, and I leave them in for about 10 minutes. Once they start floating to the top, you can see that golden color, and they're ready to pull, and just let them rest. And there you have it, fried frog legs right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. Here I've got several different colors of bell peppers. And the first thing you want to do is decide how you want to cut them. You want to go across the top, stuff the whole thing and put the lid back on? Or do you want to cut them in half like this? and stuff both sides. This way you can have more to serve. Then just make a small slice across the top so you can remove the seed bud and the membrane with a tablespoon. Then once you've got that done, lay them all face down on a broiler pan and take them straight to the oven. You want about three to four inches away from the top broiler and broil on high for about five to eight minutes. In the meantime we're going to need some chopped red onion. And then I like to slice these celery sticks in half and chop those up as well. We'll also need some garlic. Chop this up really fine. And for this recipe I like to chop up cilantro, but you can use parsley if you prefer. By now your peppers will be roasted and should look something like this. Now on the stove I'm cooking about half a pound of Italian sausage. All you want to do is just get this a nice golden brown. And then add all that fresh chopped ingredients that we cut earlier. It's pretty much the holy trinity of ingredients. And we're going to just splash this with a little bit of cooking wine. And saute this just for a few minutes here. Now over on the side here I've got some Cajun rice and black beans. And in all honesty I just used a pre-package made by Zatarans. It's the easiest way to do it. And all you gotta do is add this here to your cooked Italian sausage and vegetables we've been sauteing. Stir that in real good. And be careful not to overcook it and make it dry. We want a little moisture in there. Then we can start stuffing our peppers using a ice cream scoop. And if you're looking for other options for stuffed peppers, check out my jalapeno poppers and my stuffed poblanos at the end of this video. Now top off every one of these with some fresh mozzarella cheese. Then take it straight to the oven and we're going to bake these 
at 425 degrees for 10 minutes. And here's what they'll look like when they're done. Just sprinkle that fresh cilantro right over the top. And there you have it. Roasted stuffed peppers right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. If all you used was chopped green onion, chopped parsley, and some chopped garlic, that's all you'd need for this boudin recipe. But I like more flavor, so we're going to chop some red onion, some celery, some bell peppers, some jalapeno pepper, and we'll add that to the mix. Now here I've got some raw andouille sausage links. I'll just cut these open and peel out all the meat. Then just add it all to a hot pot, get it all mashed up, and cook it through thoroughly. Then I like to add some butter. Once that's melted in a bit, we'll go ahead and add all of our veggies and get these sauteing. One of my secret ingredients is clam juice. And a little red wine. Now to make boudin, we've got to make blood sausage. In order to do that, you've got to add some liver. Then you want to just top it off with some broth. And you can use vegetable or chicken. Then once you get this stirred in a bit, we're going to go ahead and add our dry ingredients. Some salt, some black pepper, some chili powder, and a little bit of cayenne. I also like to shake in some Worcestershire. And once you've got all this mixed in, you're going to go ahead and top it off with the lid and let this simmer for about 30 minutes. Now here's what you end up with. You've got more of a soupy texture here and you've still got some real nice chunk but tenderness to the meat. But you want to add this to a blender so you can pulse it just to thin it out a bit. Now you just want to strain out all the liquid so you can use it to cook the rice. Just run a spoon or a spatula back and forth until all the liquid is gone. Then just add the meat back to the pot. Now you don't have to cook your rice this way, but there is so much flavor left over in this broth. So once you've rinsed your rice, you can go ahead and fill it up with the broth. Now if you can reach your index finger down into the broth, touch the rice with the very tip of your finger and have the liquid cross your first knuckle, you're good to go. That's all the liquid you're going to need to cook this rice to perfection. And once it's done, all you have to do now is add the rice to the meat mix. Now this is the exact same recipe you want to use when you're making boudin balls. And I'll plug that video at the end of this recipe. But today, we're going to stuff this boudin into hog casings. And you can usually buy this or pick this up from your local butcher. And if you've got a meat grinder you can add a horn attachment to, you can just slide this stuff right over the top and then on the end, just tie it straight in a knot and you're ready for stuffing. All you have to do now is just load the top with your boudin mix and start stuffing your casings. I usually start out slow at about level 4 until it starts running real smooth and then I crank that up to about a 6 or a 7. 
and if you've got some extra hands it'll really help knock this stuff out. Then just make sure you leave a couple inches of casing but when you pull it off you can just tie it off like a balloon. And just like clown animal balloons you can just twist this off into regular lengths. But be careful because just like balloons sometimes it'll pop. And you can either start cooking this right away or you can let it marinate in the refrigerator for a few hours. And there you have it, Boudin, right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing I like to do is tenderize the entire chicken breast with a needling device. Then applying pressure with one hand, I'll take the knife in the other and cut this chicken breast in half. That gives me two portions to cut and fry. Then you want to cut five slices only three quarters of the way up the chicken breast. That'll give you six equal portions, just like that. Then in a large bowl you want to pour about a cup's worth of buttermilk, just enough to completely submerge the chicken. You want to let it marinate in here for about 10 minutes. Now here I've got a cup's worth of self-rising flour and I'm going to be adding some crab and crawfish boil seasoning. A little bit of black pepper, some ground sage, and to give it a little bit of a crispy crunch we're going to add a little bit of cornstarch. Then just thoroughly mix these ingredients together. Now in another bowl I've got two cracked eggs and I'm going to splash it with water and about a half cup's worth of Louisiana hot sauce. Once again just thoroughly mix this. Now the process is simple. We'll pull our chicken from the buttermilk and dredge it in the seasoned flour. Then we'll put it in our egg wash both sides and once again we'll go back to dredging in the seasoned flour and it's really important at this point to make sure that the chicken is fully covered in seasoned flour and then let it rest for about five minutes then add it to your oil at about 375 degrees for about six minutes in the meantime, I'm going to mix some sour cream and mayonnaise with a little bit of that powdered ranch mixture. This makes a perfectly balanced, nice, smooth, creamy ranch. Perfect for dipping. Now to ensure even cooking, I like to turn this over a few times during the process. And then as soon as it's reached that golden brown, you're done and then just set it aside to let it cool down until you're ready to plate. And there you have it, ripping chicken right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. <laughs>